rejoice. You who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. I thought, wow, that's appropriate. The name of the conference is Rejoice. I mean, how convenient. Rejoice. You who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. I thought, man, that's quite a greeting. That must have put her, her mind at rest at that point. She must think, well, there's got to be something good. Then I started to get in here and think, well, what does the word rejoice mean? What, any ideas? What, are the, what do you think the word rejoice means? It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> Be happy, right? It's happy. It's talking about happiness. But more than that, it means to joy again. And if you look up in the Chambers Dictionary, it says to joy again. Rejoice. Joyce is where we get joy from, right? Re is to do something again. Does that make sense? Is it, is it coming together for you now? Right? We're getting it? Rejoice. To joy and to joy again. And to joy again and to joy again and to joy again. So we're getting a little bit of a theme here. And I started to think about the subject of joy. And what, what this greeting was that the angel came. Now, we've, we've got the benefit of having the whole scripture here. So we know what the end of the story is. But imagine yourself in Mary's position for just a moment. She's a young girl. We don't know exactly how old. She might have only been like 13, 14, okay? A young woman. And this angel appears to her and gives her this news. Rejoice, greetings. You who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Now, that's kind of a, that's a comforting thing. The Lord is with you. That's got to be good, right? I mean, it's better than the Lord being against you. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And then he says, when she saw him, she was troubled by his words. Now, I told you, didn't I? When angels show up, you never quite know how it's going to go. And considered in her mind what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, because you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. Now, there's a whole lot of good news in here. And I started thinking about this, about the subject of joy. You know, the fact that he said to her, rejoice, Mary. Don't be afraid, for God is with you. You've found favor with God. Man, there's a whole lot in here that we're going to unpack over the next couple of days. We need to understand what it means to have God with us. God with us, right? When we have God with us, not only is it better than not having God not with us, but it changes everything. You know, sometimes I think we don't, we don't pay enough attention to what happened the moment that we got born again. Some of us prayed a prayer of salvation. Do you remember those days? All right? Some of, some of you, it might have been yesterday. It might, maybe it hasn't happened yet. For some of you, it might have been longer ago than you wish to di disclose. Maybe you're, you're, a very young, you're a very young lady. Okay? We might, might be long, but you know, we need to go back to that moment. What happened at that very moment when we invited Jesus into our heart? What happened? Because you see, something on the inside of us changed that will never, ever be the same again. That moment, that de one defining moment was more spectacular than any other decision you have ever made or will ever make in your entire life. That one moment placed God with you, placed you with God. Amen? Now, God always wanted to be in a relationship with you, but he's never going to force his way in. You know, we were created, we were made in the very image of God to be in relationship with him our whole life. But, this, but your whole life, up until that point when we receive, we say it's receiving salvation. Really, it's receiving Jesus. He's saying, Jesus, I, I know that you're real. I love you, and I want you to come and live on the inside of me. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. The moment when we, when we made that decision and Jesus came to take up residence on the inside of us, we became spiritually alive. Did you realize that you have a spirit side of you? Right? You, know, you might just look at each other and think, well, they just have flesh. You know, some of them are big, some of them are little, some of them are short, some of them are tall. We come in all shapes and sizes. But there's more to you than meets the eye. You see, on the inside of you, you have a spirit. We say it's a spirit man, but I think we could say it's a spirit woman. Okay? As we're in a women's conference. We have a spirit woman on the inside of us, okay? We have a spiritual side on the inside of us that becomes alive when we receive Jesus. And you know, when we receive Jesus now, we have abilities that we didn't have before. Right? We have an ability that we didn't have before. I want to show you something. In Galatians 5, look at this. Galatians 5, if you've got your Bibles, it's good to bring your Bibles to church. You can have a Bible on your phone, right? That's a good excuse. You can be texting and no one will know. They think you're being spiritual. Look at this. This is the fruit, we call this the fruit of the Spirit. See, when you become spiritually alive on the inside of you, you now have God's nature on the inside of you. 
God's nature, that means you don't have to, to deal with the same circumstances in the same way that you did before. You have abilities now that you didn't have before. Look at this in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, here we are, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control against, against such there is no law. This is the fruit of the Spirit that lives on the inside. So joy is listed as the second one. It's important. Love. We have love between, between us. We have love from God to us. Okay, there are different kinds of love. But joy is part of that, of that fruit that now lives on the inside of us. That means that no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what trials, no matter what trauma, no matter what tragedies happen, no matter what hardships happen, it doesn't change the fact that we still have the opportunity to respond with one of those fruits. Now, is it easy? Oh, come on now. Have you breathed a day in your life? Right? Seriously, no one said living the Christian life was going to be easy. Okay? But nevertheless, we have a capacity now that we didn't have before. We can respond differently to things. And I started thinking about this joy. Remember this word joy? It comes from rejoice, to joy again, to joy again. And when I started thinking about the, the phrase the angel said, it was like, rejoice, Mary, for God is with you. I started thinking about my life before I got born again. You know how, how I, I came from a place of fear, from trauma, from, tra from tragedy. For, for it was just, life was just hard and, and bad stuff happened and bad people happened and it just wasn't good, right? But when I got born again, I started to look at those experiences differently. I started to realize, hang on a minute, God is with me now. So whatever happens to me now, I'm not the same Carly that I was before Jesus had, came into my heart. God is with me, and that changes something. That changes things on the inside. That gives me an ability. When I teach um, children's church, they say, that gives me a superpower that I didn't have before, right? That means I can choose to walk in joy. I can choose to walk in love. I can choose to walk in peace. I can choose to walk in self-control. Now, I still have to choose, but I have an ability to respond to life's challenges that I didn't have before. I didn't have before. 